We grow, forage, and hunt the majority of our own food, but we don't own a lot of land. So we do most of our hunting and foraging on public game lands and most of our growing in community garden plots. Over the next couple of months, we'll be processing all of the staples that we eat for the rest of the year. Flour corn, dry beans, potatoes, and pumpkins and winter squash are literally what we survive on in the winter. And it's amazing how much sustenance you can grow with those crops, even on a small 20 by 20 foot plot. The other great thing about these crops is that after getting them established in the spring, they're almost completely hands off until harvest time. We don't irrigate them or weed them or water them beyond those first few weeks when they're still small and getting established. And now here we are in August at the beginning of what we like to call dealing with the abundance season where every trip to the community garden is loading up on what's ready to harvest and preserving it so that it can last throughout the following months. One downside to having our crops out at community garden plots is we have to be wary of pest damage since we aren't able to constantly monitor the produce as it ripens like we would if we lived there. So we harvest our beans and corn as soon as they mature without waiting for them to completely dry down on the plant. We've learned the hard way that if birds or raccoons find your mature corn, they can wipe it out in a matter of days. As long as the corn kernels are fully mature and the beans are separated from their shell, they will dry down just fine at home. There are undoubtedly faster ways to shell beans or husk corn, probably some sort of DIY machine we could rig up to do it for us, but I honestly love the sensory process of shelling each bean, breaking open that pod and hearing the beans clatter into the metal bowl. It's one of the best forms of meditation I've found. Right now, we're mostly harvesting black beans, a variety called Cherokee Trail of Tears that has been extremely reliable and prolific for us throughout the years. But as the fall arrives, we'll start pulling in the swirling galaxy patterned Good Mother Stollard and creamy speckled Hadassah Shield figure. One of my favorite things is selecting new heirloom dry beans to try every year alongside our old standby favorites. We like to make an evening of it and put on a show while we work through a big pile of beans. When we first bring the corn home, we throw it on this makeshift shelf with a fan on it to make sure it gets good airflow until we have time to shuck it and hang it. Shucking it while leaving a few leaves on as a handle lets us tie it in bundles, which we hang up on nails in our dining room. This is how we store it all fall and winter, taking off a few cobs at a time as needed to grind into cornmeal or turn into masa.
The beans will let dry thoroughly and then store in airtight glass jars in our pantry. I love that the food we'll eat this winter is also how we decorate our home, and I find it all so much more beautiful than anything that we could buy in a store. These foods are the foundation of what we eat in the winter, and we'll continue to process them as they're ready. But this is also an amazing season for foraging. It looks like it's going to be a great year for apples and acorns, so follow along and we'll show you how we harvest and preserve those next.